Welcome to Electronics and More. In today's video, I will be performing several tests using water to determine the electrical conductivity of water. Let me remind you that this is an extremely dangerous experiment, so please do not try duplicating what you are about to see in this video. This wire right here is connected to the AC main supply, 120 volts, and it's being fed through a 1 amp fuse. The end here is a stainless steel nail. I'm going to place it inside this little Pyrex bowl with the water. I'm going to take a 20 watt bulb from a microwave oven and connect that up here. Okay, let's connect this to the other side of the bulb. Now this wire here is connected to the neutral on the 120 volt line. We now have a completed circuit the AC mains power supply flows through the stainless steel nail, through the water, to the other stainless steel nail, through the load, and to neutral. Let's turn on the power and see if this lights up. Before I turn on the power, let me connect up my digital multimeter to the circuit so you can confirm that there is 120 volts being supplied. Once the circuit's powered up, I'll take the black probe, touch it to the neutral on the lamp, and you should see 120 volts show up on the meter. Let me turn on the power. All right. You can see there's 120 volts across the circuit. And you also see that the lamp is not lighting. That's a 20 watt lamp. What I'm going to do now is move this nail closer to that nail so there's less resistance in the water because we'll be closer to that nail. First, let me take that out like that. I am right next to that nail and you don't see anything going on. What I want to do now is take the digital meter, connect it in series with the lead to see what kind of current is flowing across that water. Let me turn the power off first to set it up. The digital meter is now connected in series with the circuit to measure any current flowing across the water. I'm going to turn the power back on. Any current flowing across will show up right here. All right, so as you can see, we have full power, 120 going into the water. We only have 2.6 milliamps making it to this side over here. Now, if you bring it closer, you would think it would go higher, which it should. At an eighth of an inch, we're talking 5 milliamps. That's very, very little current. Now, the reason why there's very little current flowing through this water sample because the water sample has very little dissolved solids in the water. Now I'm going to turn the power off so I can explain further. This sample of water was from my reverse osmosis system. So let me take this off since the power is off. What a TDS meter does is it measures total dissolved solids in a water sample and it uses conductivity of the water to give you that reading. The sample you see here is coming up at 13 or 14 parts per million, which is greatly reduced from the city water supply. The city water supply could be 200, 300, or as high as 800 or 1,000 in some areas. So by using RO water, we eliminated a lot of those total dissolved solids. Now the reason why 3 milliamps of current was flowing through the water was because the water was not pure water. Now pure water would be distilled water. Distilled water does not have any dissolved solids inside the water and that water would be totally non-conductive. As long as there's no solids in the water, the water will not conduct. Let me get rid of this now and switch to city water. 
All right. This sample here is around 600, which is higher than it should be, but for where I live, it's pretty good. Let's place the probes back into the water, turn the power back on, and observe what happens now using a sample with a higher TDS reading or higher dissolved solids in the water. As you now see, we are drawing 102 milliamps. The light is illuminated, though partially. Now if I take the nail and I bring it closer, there's going to be less resistance in that water the closer we get to the nail. So the light should get brighter, current should go up. hundred twenty five and further away you go it drops off so as you can see adding the dissolved solids to the water is what makes the water conductive let me turn the power off again let me switch this to a higher scale 20 all right plug it back in You have to touch the nail. So being extremely close is still only 130 milliamps. You have to touch it. 180 milliamps. As you can see, not only is the distance between the two nails a factor in the amount of current, but the surface area of the nail, how much of the nail is inserted into the water. Let's try just a tip. 40. And now we got 70, and you go deeper and deeper and deeper. Current goes up, and then it just gets higher as you get closer. Now to simulate even higher dissolved solids in the water, you can just take some salt, sprinkle it in, watch the current over there, using a plastic spoon. Current is rising. Let's put more salt. And now we have a nice bright lamp going here. I think 170 milliamps was full power and it was shorted. And now you know why salt water is so dangerous when you're around electrical wiring. What I want to do now is show you something else that's pretty neat. Let me power off. You can take a reading of this here, you'll see it's very high. 455 times 10. So now we're at 4,550 total dissolved solids per million. Very high number. Let me take this water away. Replace it with this one here. Let me change my fuse to 200 milliamps on the AC line, which is disconnected. Let's put this back to voltage. Disconnect the probes. Let's get rid of this. All right, this lamp you see right here is a 12 volt lamp. It draws around 35 milliamps. One lead is snapped off really short, but it will still work for the experiment. This is a 9 volt battery just to show you the power, all right, it's on. Using the right amount of total dissolved solids inside this water sample right here can allow you to run this bulb just like using a transformerless power supply. So this is going to go here. Now using a sample of water that has a TDS reading of around 160 or 180 parts per million, 
I am now able to light up this 12 volt lamp with no problem using 120 volts flowing through the water. So there's the bulb. Over here is the voltage across the bulb. 10.6. If I want to increase that, then I just add a little bit of salt. Stir it good. All right. Let's take a look at the voltage again. Should be higher than 10.6 now. And we're at 12.9. So it's pretty neat. You made yourself a little 12 volt power supply using just water and a little bit of salt. If this was a 100 milliamp lamp or even a quarter of an amp, you would have to add more salt to the water until the voltage rises to 12 volts across the lamp leads. Very simple to do. So now you know if somebody asks, is pure water conductive? Pure water is not conductive. What makes the water conductive are the dissolved solids in the water. If you enjoyed this video, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to watch my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.